Your constitutional freedoms under assault every day of the week. Your freedoms being taken away rapidly. I'm Artifacts Mars and this is Tyranny Watch News. Together we will explore the issues and the assaults on your freedoms, our failing schools, the incoming hordes of illegal aliens, and we'll find ways that we can stop this and return America to its greatness. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Hello, this is Artifacts Mars, and this is 28 July 2014, and this is Tyranny Watch News. And we're going to start off with news of the invasion, like we usually do. Uh, this is from TribLive.com. It's uh, basically Pittsburgh area station or something. Pittsburgh and surrounding communities reached a tipping point and plan for rapid, rapidly rising and diverse foreign population immigration experts told Tribune Review. Changes we're seeing today, which we've been seeing for years now in our building, are not merely anecdotal. We've reached tipping point, says Barbara Murdoch, manager of the Allegheny County Department of Human Services, Immigrants and Internationals Initiative. What on earth? Murak says, there's no D in that by the way, Murak says that means social welfare agencies, public service nonprofits, and religious groups should expand their literacy training, career counseling, health care programs for foreign families. About 58,000 more people overseas legally reside in the county, representing less than 5% of the population. That's not saying how many uh, illegals are there, so... This story apparently is just dealing with uh, documented immigrants that are here lawfully, green cards and such. So, you know, this shows you that even, you know, legal immigration can overload the system. But, you know, the stuff that's going down at the border is just unbelievable. Alright, the uh, next story. That probably doesn't even deserve to be in invasion news, but we'll just leave it as it is. And the next story, Border Patrol points a little gun at Iowa Boy Scout troop, threatens young scouts. Border Patrol agents pull a gun on mid-Iowa Boy Scout Troop 111 is four vandals scouts tried to drive from Canada to Alaska. The scout leaders were furious. I would think so. So they were threatened by agents. I am outraged. The agent took his Jim Fox, Boy Scout Troop 111 leader, told Iowa KCCI television boys were threatened by the agents for taking a photo. The agent took his camera, told them they were would be arrested, fined possibly $10,000 and 10 years in prison. The agent had a loaded gun pointing, pointed at the boy's head. I am outraged by the fact that we have 18 Boy Scouts come want to come home, yet we have southern borders. It's like a sieve. Yeah, no fooling. So here we have 
American boys, Boy Scouts, and they wind up being threatened and having a load of gun pointed at them, yet these illegals can just pour across the border like it's nothing. State statement ob obtained from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency denied that the agent had a pulled gun and pulled a gun on the Iowan Boy Scout. CPV's review of this group's inspection, including video footage in the case that our officer did not under unholster or handle his weapon, the state of the allegation. The review revealed nothing out of the ordinary. We have reached out with Boy Scout Troop for additional information in reference to the allegation. Video footage has been referred to CP. PB internal affairs for f further review. This is beyond belief. Now I took a look at the story and took a look at the video and I believe Scoutmaster, I don't believe the authorities on this one. I think Kim probably did have gun pointed at him. This is absurd. This is criminal. I don't have any words. This may even warrant a separate video. Alright, uh. In other invasion news, the uh, president of one of the invading countries, Honduras, President Juan Orlando Hernandez came to Washington this week with just the well, toughest hand a world leader can play. This tiny, impoverished country is both very dependent on what happens here in the United States and more or less without leverage to shape it. The only leverage, in fact, is that Honduras and its small, equally troubled neighbors Guatemala and El Salvador have found recently has come to in the form of small children, tens of thousands of whom have clamored over the U.S. border this year in numbers so large that I expected they created an immigration crisis which at least has succeeded in placing Central America's plague of drugs, violence, and poverty on the Washington agenda in the way it would not have otherwise. And he goes on to blame us. This is unbelievable. He goes on to blame us. You know, the drugs and whatnot. Uh, it's ridiculous. So he's blaming us. You're at fault for the invasion. We're not at fault for it. Screw you. I'm getting a little angry, I'm sorry, but I am getting a little angry. You keep sending your uh, citizens here and flooding this country. And it is damaging, going to damage ours very severely in terms of economics and diseases, gangs. I have no words. All right. Moving on to international news. Iran it says we will hunt down Israelis. Host house. Deputy commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guards vowed revenge against Israel for its ongoing military incursion in Gaza which has already killed hundreds of Palestinians and dozens of Israelis you people of Israel are trees of our roots which are planned in the Islamic lands by the British Brigadier General Hossein Salami said at Friday's prayer sermon in Tehran this is from the Daily Caller by the way and chase you house to house and 
Take revenge for every drop of blood on our martyrs in Palestine. Of our martyrs in Palestine. And this is beginning in point of the Islamic nations awakening for a year defeat. Deputy Commander promised that Palestine will no longer remain calm and cited a statement by Ayatollah who Hola Khomeini, founder of Islamic religion, Iman Khomeini with a statement that Israel must be wiped from the face of the earth, gave a true message to the world. Basically, he's trying to get the uh, Arab nations to join in the fight and attack Israel. It's one of this monster. He's going to wind up having a severe case of radiation poisoning if he doesn't cease and desist. So I'm sure Israel, if Iran were to attack, will use nukes. I think this is all talk, to be honest. I don't think Iran is really going to join in. They're trying to incite, when he said, other countries to join into this. But I don't think that's going to happen. They're mostly talk. Thank God for that. In the meantime, our coyote in chief. So far, since being re-elected, I uh, say that in quotes. While domestic crises simmer and international conflicts flare, Obama can be seen counting on pitch and pop. This is from New York Post. He has attended 75 fundraisers since 2012 re-election, and 81 rounds of golf. He's on his pace of double 104 days he spent on links during first term. I did a story yesterday that uh, said that he's basically checked out mentally, which I would agree with. I think he's seen this job and all these international crises and saying, you know, let somebody else handle this. That's what it looks like to me. Here's an example. On July 17, the day Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 was shot down by Russia-backed Shepardus, Obama attended two fundraisers in Man Manhattan with little mention of the incident. He golfed three days later. This is not leadership. This is just, well, screw this. I don't want to do my job. And he goes off and plays golf. It doesn't even mention about basketball games. So, what can you say? Uh, he does not care, unfortunately. But he cares when there are illegal aliens being brought in from the border. Unbelievable. Alright. Well, it wasn't a lot of news. A lot of new news, so we're going to do our Dilligaf selection for the day and call it quits. Keith Urban uh, in Boston Creek. Keith Urban is an Australian singer. Some call him country, I would disagree, but at any rate, he had a nutso concert. Alcohol related issues sent 22 fans to the hospital and 15 to protective custody, while several more are headed to court after a country music concert at the Xfinity Center in Mansfield was heading superstar Keith Urban labeled Nutzel. It's from the Boston Herald, by the way. So, essentially, there was a big brawl. There was a big drunken ball, brawl is what it amounts to, and... I 
I guess it was much like a rap concert or something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. Wait, so they call him country. He's not country in my book, but that's a matter of musical taste. Well, that's our Dill Gas section for today. Dill Gas stands for Do I Look Like I Give a... Well, you know. I'm Artifacts Mars. Thanks for listening.